Hey everybody, and welcome to a series that I've been brainstorming and kind of hinting at for a long time, uh, but now I'm finally following through with. This is Northern Lion Plays Crusader Kings 2 The Old Gods, unless I've come up with a more creative name for it. Uh, and I struggled with how to do this game, or do a series on this game, because A, this game is a huge learning curve and I'm still somewhat uh, an amateur at it, even after something like 40 or 50 hours of play, maybe even closer to 60 after playing the expansion for so long. Uh, but B... Also, there's lots of dry periods, so I might abuse some editing here, but I figured, you know, I'm gonna give this the Northern Lion touch, which is uh, either a good touch or a bad touch, depending on how you feel about it. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna play as a, a pagan lord, to kind of show off what goes on in the old gods and why I think this is an awesome expansion. And beyond that, to make it a little bit unique, uh, we're actually playing as a character that I've designed myself. Ignore the hair, I made him bald, but I guess by also making him 24 years old, as I am, uh, it, they were like, no man could possibly go bald at 24. Well, fuck you, Paradox! It happens, man. Too much free testosterone. Anyway, so we're playing as King Northern Lion of uh, Sudrayar. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but we'll change that name eventually. Uh, and I've kind of designed the ruler by myself. This is using the Ruler Designer DLC, which unfortunately does not come with the vanilla version of CK2 uh, or the Old Gods. It's a $5 add-on uh, that allows you to create your own ruler and install them wherever you want. And we're going to start in 867. This is going to be kind of a pseudo-tutorial, pseudo-entertainment, uh, pseudo-informative uh Susa Studio, Phil Collins, uh, kind of let's play. But anyway, so you can just get some traits on myself for now. I'm 24 year, four years old, as you can see. I don't have any kids. I have no wife, so we're gonna probably get on that as soon as possible. Uh, I've really cranked up my uh, stewardship stat because, as Alpaca Patrol told me, uh, your stewardship stat. You know, we have base stats for diplomacy, intrigue, uh, m martial ability, stuff like that, learning. Uh, but stewardship's really important to get your domain size as high as possible. If you don't know what I'm talking about now, don't worry about it. Basically, this means I'm going to be able to effectively tax provinces that I hold much better. Uh, I'm also a poet, which is just going to give us some funny kind of uh, instances that we'll encounter in the game. I'm an indulgent wastrel, which again improves our stewardship. Uh, I'm proud, which gives us more prestige monthly. And I am slothful, which carries uh, a lot of negative consequences. But I use this to pull my age down. Because in the ruler designer, you know, every uh, kind of trait or attribute that you give yourself either in increases your age or lowers it based on whether it makes you better or worse. Anyway. Let's get started here. So the first thing that I do on any run of Crusader Kings 2 is kind of size up my territory. As I said, we are playing as Sudrayar here. Again, I'm, if I'm mispronouncing that, I really apologize. We'll call it Scotland or Ireland fairly soon, probably. Uh, and my territory consists of, like, this province right here, this one right here. We own Dublin down here, and uh, also the Isle of Man, uh, which is a little bit confusing. But what I really like about starting as these guys is they start with two wars and a fuck ton of military. So we have 11,000 men here, which is crazy big for 867. Uh, in contrast, if you start in like 1066 in Ireland, you usually get like 700 men from one of these provinces. So 11,000 is enormous. Also, uh, we start with two wars. So we start with, uh, if you see down here, we have a war with King Edmund of East Anglia, which is Norfolk and Suffolk down here. Again, uh, the pronunciation is just going to be uni universally bad, so get used to it. Uh, and uh, also with the King of Northumberland, and Northumberland is actually this larger kind of pinkish territory here. So what we want to do right off the bat is conquer uh, probably as much of Northumberland as we can. Now the thing is there is a rival... Uh, tribe, basically you could say, because we're Norse, that's Jorvik, and they're going to be trying to conquer as much of Northumberland as possible as well. Uh, so we want to take as many provinces as we can so that it'll become our territory when the war ends. Anyway, the very, very first thing I do when I play through a game of Crusader Kings, especially with a ruler who is unmarried, is pick an, pick an ambition. So ambitions are basically what we want to accomplish with our life. So... Uh, a lot of these are kind of stock. In fact, all of these are stock. Amass wealth means have over 500 gold. Uh, become paragon of virtue means have over 500 piety, which uh, is like uh, religious favor. These are going to be easy to get later, so we won't take them now. Uh, but get married is a fairly easy one uh, that we can do uh, if we want to marry our uh, king off. Unfortunately, no one's going to want to marry him because he's Norse, so uh, a, l a lot of his prestige is going to get hit, but that's not important for now. Or become king of Scotland. If Northern Lion wants to become king of Scotland, it allows him the unlimited use of the subjugation, cost us belly within the kingdom. This ambition cannot be cancelled. Let's take that. That should be interesting. So we're going to try to make King Northern Lion the first, uh, the king of Scotland, and, you know, we don't have any kids. That's a negative thing, but we'll take some concubines during sieges. All right, no heir of your dynasty, that's a problem, and ruler unmarried. We will get married, never fear. Okay, so this is where things are going to get interesting. So what is my plan of attack? I, I like playing as the pagans because war is just constant, 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 whereas uh, in vanilla CK2, war is something that you kind of have to finagle out of people. you got to get claims and cost us bellies, which is basically a reason to attack them. With pagans, 
Uh, you basically have Costas Belly automatically on any coastal province. We might not be able to see it yet, but, uh, you know, starting with these wars is a good thing as well. So, let's get to it, shall we say? Or, uh, shall we, I guess. Uh, I, what I'm gonna try to do, my strategy for this, is, if possible, I would love to just offer peace to, uh, East Anglia, if I can get, like, a white peace here. Uh, we, we, oh, we'll lose a fuck ton of prestige for that, though. Okay, never mind, we're not gonna do that. I was thinking, like, I'm not just, I'm just not gonna pay attention to East Anglia. I really wanna snatch up as much of this Northumberland territory as possible, so... Uh, we're gonna move men in to, uh, maybe this province right here, which I can't see what it is. Westmoreland, okay. Uh, and then we'll expand from there, and again, we want to take as much of the territory as possible, because Jorvik is gonna be trying to snatch some up as well. And in fact, it's probably in our best interest to... Nah, this is fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna speed things up a little bit. Apologies, it's been like six minutes, we haven't accomplished anything yet. Uh, and, and we'll get going. I, I should, uh, put my council to work as well, but we'll, uh, have them start doing something... Uh, once we actually get started with sieging and stuff here. So we got a lot of enemies, you know, um, the this uh, Brethne, I guess, uh, as well as the uh, armies of Mercia, but they are paling in comparison to the size of our army. Uh, so that's A-OK -okay for us. So again, you can see uh, Jorvik is starting to siege some territory as well. Uh, when it, when the war ends, and, and we will win this, never fear, Northumberland is going to get basically wiped out the face of the planet. Um, but uh, we uh, will be privy or will own whatever territory we got in the siege. So I really want to make sure uh, that I'm sieging as much as much uh, territory as possible and preferably uh, as much territory kind of close to the northern border here so I can use these to eventually get further and further uh, towards my aim of, of conquering Scotland. So I'll let Jorvik fight with uh, these guys down here and instead I'm going to try to take this territory up here at the front. Again, uh, remember that I am not necessarily the uh, best player of Crusader Kings. Uh, I am just a player of Crusader Kings. This is a historical sandbox. There's right ways and wrong ways to do things, and I might not even understand all of the uh, basic mechanics or principles that you can use to accomplish some things, uh, but it's all about just having fun playing the game kind of the way that you see fit. You can... Uh, there's more than one way to skin a cat in this game is maybe the best way to put it. So, if you're not familiar with what's going on right now, basically any unit with kind of a red bar is uh, enemy to us. And uh, what we're going to want to do, I'm not too concerned about them because they're all relatively low numbers here. What we're doing is just kind of stacking our men up on this territory and then we're letting time pass and they are effectively sieging it. Sometimes uh, they're, we're getting into battles here and, you know, I'm just mostly looking at victory and defeat. Uh, but we're, we're getting victory on each one of these. And uh, we're just kind of letting uh, time pass so that we can siege. Occasionally we'll get, like, instances in the siege. And uh, remember, like, once we start kind of getting into the fundamentals, I will use editing to skip over as much of this uh, that is not relevant as is possible. Uh, but basically, the, the fundamental formula is men plus enemy land equals siege. As long as you have more men uh, sieging that the enemy has. And occasionally you'll see things like, oh, a seed has been planted. Like, you've deceived them and now you're inside and things will go much faster. Or alternatively, you know, like, we've been hit by some kind of infectious disease so we can't uh, uh, siege them as effectively. And these have modifiers that change uh, how things work. But anyway, each uh, province... Typically has three holdings. Oh, we actually dragged out uh, a countess. Uh, so we will send her off to the dungeons. What's her name? Uh, okay, I can't pronounce that. She's the Countess of Tiviotdale. Uh, uh, each province, as I mentioned, has three holdings, usually. Uh, and as you siege these, you will see the war score go up. So what I want to do here is just get this war score as close to 100 as possible. Uh, and then we'll negotiate a peace with the uh, King of Northumberland. And we'll, you know, take as much of this territory as is humanly possible. For now... Let's just keep sieging for now. So I think we did... Uh, oh, no, we haven't finished off one province yet. And you know, another thing that I'm going to do here is actually... Because remember, I, I have to have a son in particular uh, if I want to pass on my rule. Because you play... After you die in Crusader Kings, keep in mind we're in 867 now. This game goes to like 1400. So every time you die, you play as your heir. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do here is go to my prisoners. And this is another thing that is uh, exclusive to the Pagans, I think. I can take my prisoner as a concubine. Might not necessarily want to marry her, because that's going to cost me a lot of prestige, which is going to carry some negative impacts, but uh, this is where the emergent gameplay comes in. So basically, you know, this guy decided to fight us, and we're like, well, you know what? We're basically going to bone your wife and force her to carry our children for us. Because I'm not saying that's the right way to do things, people out there on YouTube. Uh, what I am saying is 867, man, there's some crazy shit going on here that we've got to be... Uh, you know, unfortunately, we have to take part in if we, if we want to succeed. Uh, by the way, I don't think I've even raised... Have I raised troops? I guess I have raised troops. We'll, we'll talk about that system later. But again, remember that this is like a pre-invasion force uh, that is kind of unique to uh, Jorvik and uh, Sudrear. 
Uh, so I most of the time you play Crusader Kings 2, you will not have an 11,000 strong force that just uh, kind of invades with you right off the bat. Now, we've got a couple things to, we could do here. Uh, as you can see, my territory on the Isle of Man is being sieged by uh, the army of Scotland here. Scotland is going to be a principal enemy for us to get started with here. Uh, but we are going to... We can either attack them, which will require attacking these guys as well, or we can start sieging territory in uh, Cumberland, maybe. I'm going to attack them because I don't want to uh, have to unsiege that territory, basically, uh, once we get a little bit further along. So, we should have, yes, taken another uh, territory here. I guess these guys want to get up to something, which is kind of crazy for me because I could just destroy them considering I outnumber them 40 to 1. There we go, and let's move our dudes down here into Cumberland. I guess I walked around those guys in Clydesdale, which is weird. And you can see our war score is getting up there to 58. We probably want to... Oh, no. Did Jorvik get here first? I certainly hope not. I think I got there first. Um, but if uh, that war score gets up into the 80, 90 range, that's when I'll start to look to see if I can enforce my demands on the enemy. Uh, and in this situation, our demand is likely going to... Oh, I can send my men back up here. Uh, in this situation, my, uh, my principal demand is probably going to be that I get all of the territory that I have. But, you know, th those conditions are set out and based on the reason you went to war in the first place. And I'm pretty sure the reason we went to war is uh, to take over territory. I again, this war just kind of is... You inherit this war when you start the game. So these guys are sieging some of my territory that I already sieged as well, but um, it's not a big deal at all. We're at 69% war score, which, uh, crazily enough, is actually not uh, the best number as it is, you know, the rest of the time in the real world. Uh, but we actually have what could be considered a real fight uh, here... And that worries me a little bit, uh, because I really don't want to lose this invasion force. I want to keep these guys around to help me invade Scotland a little later. If you don't understand what's going on, never fear. So what I'm going to do is actually send uh, another, like, 3,000 dudes, the, the guys who were about to siege Lancaster. Uh, I'm going to send them up here, and then we're going to have, uh, you know, the ability to outnumber them. Basically, the reason I don't want the enemy to take any of our territories is it's going to be a pain in the ass to have to take these back a little bit later. So I'm really hoping that we manage to wipe them out. Uh, we managed to corner Earl Konglak, who has been killed. Beautiful, good riddance. Uh, and we're wiping out their troops pretty effectively here with minimal losses to ourselves. There we go, so we've defeated them. Uh, and that has uh, really ramped up our kind of victory, or our war score right now. Uh, and we should get another siege done here. I, once we get 90, I'll start trying to enforce demands. And that should happen pretty quickly once I, I win a couple more battles. Uh, it, it might take 100, by the way. Uh, but but most of the time it does not and if you see me skipping over these prompts and you're like god northern lion Take some more time to explain what you're doing I'm actually doing you a favor if you're not familiar with Crusader Kings 2 because if something's not relevant uh, I'm just skipping over it for now, which I, I think is the right course of action uh, That will simplify things, you know, it's like Dota when you first get started Just focus on the things that uh, you know are actually important uh, and for now uh, the the kind of stuff going on with the Varangian Guard in Greece is not really important to what's going on up here for us in, um, you know, this part of the Europe. Anyway, we're at 100% war score with the King of Northumberland. We will go to Diplomacy, offer him peace. There's three different kinds of peace. A white peace means basically you would lose prestige if you started the war, uh, and they might gain prestige if they were the defender, but otherwise it's basically just like, you know what, I wish we didn't do that, let's call it quits. Surrender uh, usually it has a huge prestige loss for the loser and a huge presti prestige gain uh, for the winner, and enforced demands is basically like, here's what I wanted from my war, uh, I beat you handily, and that's basically it. So I get whatever I want. And at 100% war score, they can't deny. So what do we get if we enforce demands here? 500 prestige? Very good. Prestige is going to allow us to uh, in, to conquer more territory later. You need prestige to invade most of the time. Gain 250 piety, which is, again, uh, religious favor. Uh, plus 5% moral authority for the Norse religion for 20 years. I don't really get into the religious stuff too much, but that's cool. Uh, and we get another 299 prestige just for having been part of this war, because we're, an, I guess, an ally to uh, the Jorviks. Anyway, obviously we're going to send this and accept it. Uh, we have conquered a little bit of territory. Not a whole lot, but, you know, gains in Crusader Kings 2 are not like Civ. They happen a little bit more uh, slowly for the most part. Now, what's interesting about this is that, uh, I'm just going to close this up, uh, is that uh, we still are at war with East Anglia, and East Anglia actually is a, they're beating us by 31% in this war. We don't want that to happen. We don't, because if I offer them a white piece right now, like I said, uh, we're going to lose a ton of prestige. They won't take it for one, but I would lose uh, 300 prestige, which I don't want to do. 
Uh, but we've got bigger fish to fry just for a second here. So, I, again, this first episode is going to be a lot of kind of exposition talking about what I'm doing, but after that we'll, we'll move much faster. Keep in mind, we've only done like a year and a half in Crusader Kings, and there's 400 possible years basically to play. So, this is our domain size. Basically, uh, once our domain size, which is the number of kind of cities and temples and stuff that we hold, uh, once that is higher than our maximum, our vassals, which are the people that are under us, are going to hate us. That's a real problem because they're going to declare civil war. Uh, they're just going to be pissed. They're the provinces aren't going to be able to be taxed as efficiently. And money is essentially power in this game. So what we want to do is um, give some of this territory away. Which might seem crazy, but they'll still we're giving it away to people who will be vassalized under us. Meaning, you know, they still do our bidding unless they're autonomous, which we'll talk about eventually. Um, by the way, I am... Northern Lion Banana Dong. I forgot that that was my last name. I'm King Northern Lion of the Banana Dong Clan. What can I say? Like father, like son. Uh, and yeah, so we want to give some of this territory away. So that, that's what we're going to do. We're going to um, go here. And we don't want necessarily want to give it to our heir. Unless, basically we want to give it to um, somebody without children, if that makes sense. We, we want to find a uh, someone in our land who is without kids. And who maybe we want to... Um, uh, promote a little bit, so we can't give women landed titles yet. Again, I'm not saying that's right, I'm just saying that's how it is right now. Uh, so let's look for some old men with no kids. For example, Bishop Faradak of Yona. Um, we can grant him some landed titles. Why don't we give him... Uh, usually what I like to do is switch the map to like a economic mode and be like, okay, what provinces effing suck? Lothian doesn't give us very much money. Tevendale doesn't give us very much money. So you know what? Uh, or Teviotdale, I guess. Again, pronunciation. My apologies. So we're going to make this guy uh, uh, the happiest man in the in the village. Uh, we're going to give him uh, that territory. Now, uh, we don't want to give him too much power. This is the balance that we're trying to get here. Uh, because he may decide, uh, you know what? I have so much power, maybe I can declare civil war on my king. And then we'll have to fight him. And that's going to be a pain in the ass. Uh, but, you know, we've given him some territory. This is good. Uh, are there any other super old dudes without kids? Uh, what about... Olaf. He's 38. Uh, does he have a son? I can't see. Yes, he does, and his son is his heir. The reason I don't want him to have a son is because then that son will have a claim on that land, and I'll probably have to fight him or imprison him later. Uh, how about our spy master? Our spy master is a chubby looking dude with no kids, uh, I think. Yes, no kids. All right, well, that is lucky for you because that means today you are going to be getting the county of. Uh, where's Berwick? You, there it is. Um, Berwick looks pretty good. Um, wait a minute. I don't own Berwick, do I? Is this Berwick? That's Carrick. All right, one second here. Sometimes the interface can be a little bit impenetrable, uh, especially if you're just getting started. So we're going to grant him maybe... Um, I mean, I guess I can just give him the city of Berwick. That's what's going on here. Uh, as well as we need to give him one more, so we'll give him the Temple of Tiringharn or Haim uh, and include lower titles as well. There you go. So we are now at a good domain size. This is good. Uh, the other thing that is probably not super important right now is that we can create some titles. So we can create a duchy in Lothian. Uh, probably not in our best interest right now because it's going to cost us a lot of money. So I'll talk about that a little bit later. So the last thing that we'll try to accomplish uh, in this first video, uh, and then we'll get into some more political and intrigue and marrying and stuff like that in the second video, uh, is ending this war with uh, East Anglia right here. So uh, it might be a little bit of an issue... Uh, because East Anglia, I believe, has like a 10,000 strong fighting force uh, at the beginning here. Whereas we only have 9,000 left of our original 11,000. So I guess Jorvik is still uh, at war. Scotland's got some troops here. Scotland is an ally, I guess, of uh, East Anglia. So I, I don't really give a shit about that force up there, if that makes sense. Uh, what I'm going to do is come into Jorvik first. And uh, I'm not actually invaded. Okay, so Jorvik has now won their war. Uh, with Northumberland, and they got a substantial degree more territory than I did because I didn't occupy effectively. But that's okay, you know, I'm happy to have a, a kind of an ally down here, even if we'll probably end up fighting them later. Am I still... It's me and King Sigurder Snake in the Eye. That is an awesome name. Uh, I hope this guy comes to our aid in this ensuing fight. Otherwise, we may have uh, some problems. Although I... Do, yeah, they have 8,000 men. That's pretty significant. Uh, at the very least, I could lose my entire, like, pre-invasion force here, which is obviously not something I want to do. Uh, what I could try to do is maybe raise a few more troops. Yeah, we have, like, another thousand, and then another few hundred. I, I could use these guys also to just straight up fight um, that force in the north. Well, let, let's see how this goes for a second. I really don't want to have to... Um... Why, why am I even sieging Mercia right now? I guess I can, I can fight... Um... 
off the allies of uh, of East Anglia, and then that will probably improve my cause. Uh, so let's try that. Maybe we'll we'll break the will of the allies of East Anglia, and then uh, we can at least get like a. I mean, I don't want to go for white peace again because losing. Uh, all that prestige is going to be a real pain in the ass later, and I don't really want that to happen, but uh, at the same time, I, I don't want to take them on head-on either, applied directly to forehead, or we're going to have some real problems. So again, I, I'm kind of losing some battles down here. I'm pretty shit when it comes to army management, so just get used to it. We're going to lose this battle right here, too. Uh, battles, for the most part, usually come down to, at least at this level, um, you know, wh which is the larger fighting force and which is the smaller fighting force, and the larger force will win almost every single time. Uh, so we're going to just keep invading here for now. Or, sorry, keep sieging here for now. Uh, Ivar the Boneless claims that he would be a better marshal than Kettle and petitions that he should be given the title of marshal. He is my new marshal. I love King Ivar the Boneless. He's like the real historical figure that should be leader were it not for King Northern Lion Banana Don the First. Um... I'll talk about the council later, but basically these are people who all have um, special abilities that uh, we use to kind of improve relations or fabricate claims on an enemy territory within uh, within our realm, or within the world, I suppose. Uh, so, you know, they'll research technology for us and stuff, but we'll talk about them in the next episode. This episode is all about war. That's all that matters for now. Uh, so again, we're going to start sieging some territory here, uh, really trying to make the enemy pay for the fact that they uh, have kind of uh, rebuked the Norse faith or something. I don't know. There is a historical precedent for this war, uh, but I'll be damned if I know what it is. If you're the kind of person who's really into history, though, uh, this will be a game that is totally up your alley. So we're actually losing uh, war score against these guys. I'm not sure what's going on. I won a siege, but somehow still lost war score. Uh, I, I really just want to fight these dudes. Like, that's my ideal scenario right now, is uh, to catch these guys kind of unawares and uh, take them down. This is going to be a longer fight than expected, though, that's for sure. By the way, if you're wondering, like, why, why is the game constantly pausing and unpausing, that's basically the way you play Paradox Grand Strategy games. Your experience in Matters of War has increased, and there are many things you will do differently in future battles. Let's focus on uh, flat terrain. That is fine by me. Although, I guess, you know, there are all sorts of hills and highlands in the area we'll be fighting, so maybe that was not the best course of action. Uh, but that's okay, that's okay. So, we're just going to play it cool for a little bit and, and do some uh, more sieging. Why we are losing, ter losing war score here is beyond me. Uh, because I am basically kicking this dude's butthole, but seriously. Uh, we'll wipe out this force, which will hopefully keep them out of the the war from now on. Uh, and then maybe with these 900 men, we'll start... Um, I, I really want to knock Mercia out of the fight here, because they uh, seem like they're going to be pains in the ass. I just won the Siege of Boston, which uh, is weird. Oh, you know what? We'll take out these Scottish dudes first, because they're going to be a total pain in the dick. And they're running away now, which is good. I, the problem is, I probably should have engaged these guys on two fronts to begin with. Um, you have been, excuse me? My courtier has decided to convert to the Catholic faith. Uh, I'm not happy about that. Anyway, that's not that important for now. Um, I'm going to start trying to wipe out uh, some of these alternate forces here. We might end up accidentally getting into a battle with these guys, and it wouldn't necessarily be the end of the world. This is an interesting battle up here as well. Uh, I'm winning, but it's going to be close. Uh, yeah, it's still pretty close. Oh, man, it's... We're actually losing the momentum here, I think. Yeah, we're... we're oh, shit, we might win. Ah, we got defeated. But basically, we, we you know, tit for tat on that fight, so we have to retreat uh, automatically. Unfortunate. I could hire some mercenaries and speed this up, but I kind of want to save my cash as well. Um, in any case, these guys can't siege us uh, because they probably have too few men, which is fine. Uh, so we'll just hang out there for a second and let our... Stuff kind of regenerate. Again, the fact that I continue to lose war score is uh, a little bit beyond me. Maybe I do want to use my pre-invasion force and just knock these dudes down to size. Uh, even if we end up losing a lot of men on that, it could be for the best. Probably isn't, but could be. And in the meantime, like, I, again, I'm like, why is this war score ticking up? I guess I can see why if I click on it. So, we've lost 12% from battles. Um, I have no idea what all this means. He's only contributing 8% to this war to begin with. Uh, so, I mean, maybe we just have momentum, or sorry, the enemy has momentum right now, which is really bad. But, you know, this might be a good opportunity to talk about, uh, mercenaries, so maybe we'll get some mercenaries. They're usually pretty expensive, uh, so this, for 1,900 men, actually, let's look at, mm, yeah, this will be fine. So, we'll call, we'll hire Colin from the Scottish band. He's got 2,200 men, it's gonna cost us 135 gold plus 8 per month. That's expensive, it might not seem like it right now, uh, trust me, it will be. So, I've hired him, and it's gonna take him, like, 7 months to get down here which is going to be a real problem. 
Um, and, you know, that's going to cost us, like, another 56 gold. And But then we're going to smash into uh, East Mercia. Or, sorry, East Anglia. My mistake. There is Mercia's down here as well. They're being torn up, too. Uh, but uh, we're going to hemorrhage money along the way, but hopefully not too, too much. Uh, and really, all we want to do is make sure that we are beating these dudes back uh, as hard as we possibly can. Don't take that out of context, please. Uh, so... If we'll have a major battle, wiping out my pre-invasion force is not my plan. But again, in Crusader Kings, you know the best laid plans of mice and men, yada, yada, yada. We're not, we're not going to have uh, necessarily guarantee... Oh, shit. Okay, we got a real battle here. I got caught unawares there. But if our men come in on this, we're like grossly outnumbered for now. But now we outnumber them, and we can turn the tide, and we wipe them out. Okay, that's very, very good. Who have we captured? We've captured uh, somebody who is maybe important, but uh, I can't really tell. Anyway, the money well spent, I think, is the the way to kind of uh, think about that battle. We lost 2,000 men, but this is worth. This is why you hire um, mercenaries. Who did we capture? We captured a, an important East Anglian bishop. Uh, that's okay. Now we can start sieging uh, East Anglian territory. But first things first, I just want to uh, wipe out as many of their men as is humanly possible because every one is giving me a pretty sizable boost uh, to my war score. And we're slowly turning this around. We've captured another person. By the way, if we capture their king, that'll just be the end of the war right there. Because, you know, we'll have him in our dungeon. We can basically tell him to do whatever the F we want. Uh, these guys are just fruitlessly sieging this territory, which is not a good uh, course of action. But in any case, uh, we'll keep this up. Oh, they have... Uh, I thought they went to a different area, but this is fine. Who did we capture this time? King Rodri, the petty king of Gwynedd. Uh, I wonder if I can... Hmm... I could execute him or ransom him for 145 gold, which might be extraordinarily important uh, once I end up, you know, finishing this war because I won't have that much gold left. Anyway, that's perfect. So we also captured a mare. We got a lot of prisoners. Cool thing about the pagans is that we can actually sacrifice these prisoners to the gods if we ever find ourselves in need of prestige. So I'm just wiping out the uh, force here and constantly capturing uh, notable figures here. And again, we're just slowly kind of, we're just pinging back and forth here. They retreat to the only area where it's safe. Uh, I go kill them, and then, uh, you know, things go very well. So we should start winning on battles, which we've probably already done. Uh, where did we lose the Battle of Kreef? Up here. Ah, uh, it's not that bad. It's okay, they won't be able to siege me. So now what I'm thinking, we, we've struck an enormous blow there. Uh, we can probably dismiss our mercenaries to save a little bit of money. And then we can uh, split our army here. Maybe take the army of um, Mats and take him down here. Because there's only two territories in uh, East Anglia. So if we manage to siege and hold all of these, I'm pretty sure they just have to give up. At the very least, we could go for a white piece, which I don't want. Um, I'm losing some minor battles up here in the north, but that's not important. All that I'm worried about right now is winning this war against East Anglia. I mean, here's the thing. I, I could take this territory. I'm just going to let that guy rot in prison. Uh, we'll deal with that again later. Gotta cut Crusader Kings 2 into um, bite-sized chunks. By the way, our concubine is pregnant. This was exactly my plan. Uh, so now we will have an heir, and I can give him uh, land as necessary. Plus, it gives us a little prestige, but mostly I just wanted a kid. Uh, again, let him rot for now. And once we start getting these sieges successful, uh, we should start taking a ton of war score. Let him rot. Uh, hopefully, anyway, although we are losing a little bit again, which is kind of crazy to me. There we go. Now, just by winning that one siege, we're up to 47%. Once we win this war, uh, and it, that's looking pretty much like an inevitability at this point, uh, but once we win, we will get this territory down here as well. I don't necessarily want it because it's not the it's not that close to the rest of my realm, but, you know, I'll, I'll take it, I guess. Uh, we are now at 69%, which is a number showing up with some shocking regularity. Uh, and we'll just keep this up because the enemy can't really justify, or can't really muster any forces that'll uh, help him out. We're at 94% now. Let's just finish this siege down here in the bottom. Uh, and nothing too major has happened. This has very much been like an isolated uh, episode about war, which is cool. So finally, King Edmund of East Anglia. We're going to offer you peace. He can't do anything but accept our demands. We will get uh, somewhere in the vicinity of 750 prestige, a ton of piety. Uh, we get all extra territory, and I believe now we have a claim on the Kingdom of England. Beautiful. Could not have gone better, even though it might seem like the, you know there were times there where things went wrong. Now, we do have, again, nine uh, things in our domain. Not pleased with that. Uh, where's our concubine here? I want to see if I can see how far along... 
I love how it doesn't say like a husband and wife. Instead, it just says man. So she's she's my concubine and not truly married, but any children she bears with him will be considered uh, considered legitimate. So the last thing that we'll do over the course of this episode, first things first, we should probably we have no wars for once, which is awesome. Uh, let's consolidate our army uh, and we'll move up again. These are this is not a traditional army. On this, uh, let me. Uh, lower my forces here. This is still uh, what remains of our pre-invasion force. Uh, so we can use these without actually officially raising our army levies, which is useful for declaring war. Because normally you have to like lower levies so it doesn't look like you're showing aggression and then raise them back up when war actually starts. But anyway, we're going to continue this onwards. We're going to consolidate our armies back in our territory. Uh, and then we are going to, once our child is born, immediately give him a bunch of territory. I should really not be floating. Uh, these many like extra territories, but I don't have, really have much of a choice right now. So as we as we wait here, let's look at what's going on with the uh, the rest of the world. Basically, there's our oh, it's a daughter. That's actually really not good. We'll we'll call her the uh, Northern Lioness the first. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, and a son. So we had twins, but with two different sexes. Okay. So this will be Northern Lion the second. That's really strange, and that might have greater implications later. But for now, we this is our new heir. Uh, we want to grant him some territory. He doesn't, he's just got born. He was born like literally an instant ago. He's already got a minus 23 opinion of us, but we like him okay. He's like, yeah, he's our son. Um, you know, 43 out of 100, I would say. Uh, so we're going to give him some stuff. We'll, we'll give him uh, titles that are not necessarily all that important. I love how our, our just born son's opinion of us can actually change uh, like as we, uh, like instantly by giving him territory. Like the son was just born. And we're giving him territory, and, you know, as an infant, he's like, Oh, thanks for the city of Lynn, Dad. You're the best. Um, and the Temple, temple of Norwich. Sure. Uh, unfortunately, we should not be able to give him counties because he's our heir. But maybe I can give my daughter a county? No. Uh, so I'm going to have to give these counties to someone else. Maybe, again, a good choice for us might be uh, our spy master, who, again, continues to not have children. Uh, I worry about giving him too much power. Uh, but we'll give him the county of uh, Suffolk. Again, the pronunciation, I apologize. Uh, and we'll also... I, I would love to spread the love out a little bit more, because he's got a lot of stuff going on here, but um, whatever. We'll give him the county of Norfolk as well. He loves us, so hopefully he won't revolt. Anyway, um, that's as good a spot as any to do kind of like a post-mortem of uh, the first four years of our Crusader Kings 2 play. Uh, we started with wars against uh, East Anglia and uh, Northumberland. We won both of them. We only took two territories up here in the Northumberland War. We took another two uh, from uh, East Anglia down here, which was kind of a surprising twist. Uh, it took a while to make that happen. We gained a ton of prestige. But remember, our ambition is to become the King of Scotland, unless that is, yeah, it's still here, become King of Scotland. Uh, so uh, that's what we're gonna try to do next. In order to become the King of Scotland, we don't have to conquer all this territory. We probably have to conquer about half of it uh, and then we can just create the Kingdom of Scotland, if that makes sense, and crown ourselves king. So we don't have to say Sudreyar anymore, we can just call it Scotland. But we'll try to do that on the next episode, if we get a chance. Also, I'm, I'm looking at this territory, this is juicy. Um, who's the lead here? We have King Artgal of Strathclyde. So if, if we zoom out, like, how has the world changed? Jorvik has a ton of territory, they're a new major power. Uh, Mercia has become Yiland. We have this territory now, and uh, we've kind of accidentally allowed the formation of this petty kingdom of Strathclyde. So we could maybe try to take that territory so that we actually maybe have a way to push into Ireland later. Um, but I might just try to take Scotland as soon as possible because they're going to be a pain in the neck later. But they're also going to have a lot of troops. But uh, let me just try one thing really quickly. Maybe this guy will be okay if I just offer him vassalization. No, I can't. We're the same. We're both petty kings. All right. Anyway, that's the uh, the first episode of Crusader Kings 2, The Old Gods. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. It's definitely something a little bit different for me, and again, I, I realize I probably made an F-ton of mistakes. Get used to it. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the start of a new series, I always appreciate any support you can give it. As always, again, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.